name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So I know I'm not alone, and that many of you have also been staying up later than normal to watch the Olympics, uh, and it's been a kind of an addictive thing to go to the metal tracker, to go and see how we are doing, and then somehow it's, it's been restorative to our American pride to see that we are dominating. Uh, it'll change, actually, as you're looking at the medal tracker, and you won't have any idea what sport we actually just won a medal in, the rules of the sport, the participants in the sport, or even the equipment to play the sport, uh, but we won gold in that sport. Uh, and I think at some time, uh, we've become aware that we've somewhat missed the mark. We've put so much attention into winning the gold medal or the silver medal. Uh, people have cheated to get there. Uh, and I think we've forgotten that the Olympics is about more than how we did in our particular event. We've certainly seen in the news uh, places where we've fallen short of our, our Olympic spirit. And the difference between an Olympic hero or an Olympic champion and someone who just happens to win the race. Uh, and I think sometimes we do that outside of the uh, Olympic sphere. Uh, but there's always those moments of correction, uh, those moments that you can point to. And I think uh, because they are, are so eye-opening, they're also so refreshing. Uh, one of them uh, that I'm sure many of you have seen uh, was that moment during the uh, 5,000 uh, meter uh, uh, preliminary race uh, where uh, an American and a, and a New, New Zealander uh, collided into each other uh, and Nikki Hamlin from, uh, 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 from New Zealand was running uh, just ahead but uh, the American uh, started to tumble and, uh, and they both went down uh, and then the American, uh, D'Agostino, uh, gets up and, uh, and Abby D'Agostino goes over to, uh, to Nikki Hamlin and, and helps her up. Uh, and they both start running together to, to finish the race, to realize their Olympic dream. Uh, and, then, uh, and then the American, uh, Abby, goes down uh, realizing that she's, she's hurt her knee in the process of the fall. Uh, and then it's, uh, uh, it's Hamlin's turn, the New Zealander, to pick her up. Uh, and to encourage her to finish the race. And then there was a, a beautiful image when they're both uh, at the finish line with their arms wrapped around each other. Uh, and you realize that, uh, that that's truly uh, what this is about. That's truly what we've been working towards is helping people realize their dreams uh, and, 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 and realizing them together. And it's one of those beautiful moments. But it made me think, uh, what are some of the other great Olympic moments that necessarily haven't uh, been caught uh, in the medal counter? Uh, and I came across one that was pretty moving. Have any of you ever heard of Lutz Long? I know Scott has because he was at the 8 o'clock service. But uh, has anybody else uh, heard of Lutz Long? He was a German uh, uh, broad jumper before they changed it to the long jump. Uh, and he had the uh, uh, European title. Uh, and he was in first place in the uh, preliminary uh, rounds of the, uh, of the long jump in 19, or the broad jump in 1936. Uh, in Berlin. And if you remember, those Olympics uh, were supposed to be uh, a, a propaganda-filled opportunity to show the German might, to show uh, what they had been building in Germany. Uh, and he was the lead qualifier uh, and the world record holder at the time, Jesse Owens, uh, had missed his first two jumps. He was striving so much for perfection that he kept jumping just off the end of the line and, and being disqualified. He had one more jump or he wouldn't qualify. And so Lutz Long, uh, with, with Hitler looking overhead, uh, walks up uh, to Jesse Owens and says, you know your best is so much better than the rest of ours that if you try leaping four inches earlier, you will still qualify for the finals. Uh, and he took his advice, and he did so. And then in the finals, uh, he went on to win gold, uh, and uh, uh, Lutz Long ends up winning silver. Uh, but they kept their friendship going. And then as soon as, uh, as uh, Jesse Owens won gold, again, with Hitler looking down and with all of, uh, 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 of uh, the Nazi regime there gathered around, he goes and he's the first to congratulate Jesse Owens for winning his gold medal. And they kept that friendship. They wrote letters back and forth. Uh, and they went on. Uh, 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 Lutz uh, Long went on to fight uh, on the German side during World War II. And he would continue to write letters. And the very last letter he wrote before his death uh, in, in Sicily uh, in 1943 uh, was about his son, who had been born a year earlier. And he wrote to Jesse Owens. And he said, please tell my boy 
about the way life used to be before we were separated by war. Does anyone to say what I mean is, let him know what men can be to one another. And Jesse Owens was the best man in his son's wedding, in Long Son's wedding. And I think there we get a glimpse of the fact that it's not just about our own dreams, our own ambitions, but about participating in a larger dream, about having other people realize the dream that God had for them. Uh, and how many people are willing to do that? Uh, but I think that's the responsibility of the church, uh, is to help each person realize their dreams, and in doing so, realize a larger dream, God's dream for the kingdom of, uh, of God possible here on earth. We get that from Jeremiah something for each of us, that God has made us in God's image, that God has, has known us before we were ever in the womb, that God has consecrated us, that God has made us holy. God has given us a special task and a special gift and has a dream for each of us. And as members of the church, we're there to help us all realize that dream. Jesus realized that. And in the gospel, uh, and it's one of several gospels where sometimes the church doesn't quite get it. We're like that Olympian sometimes, and we have such blind ambition about making sure we worship perfectly, uh, we sing the most glorious hymns, uh, that we beautify everything that we do, that sometimes uh, things go unmet. The real spilling out uh, of, of the gospel doesn't get done for the sake of our perfection in this particular realm or in this particular world particular realm, uh, and we're not new to that. Uh, and Jesus, and especially in Luke's gospel, brings that uh, to a point several times. The church, to protect the masses, uh, would, keep, would keep others outside the town gates, would keep others outside uh, the, the, the communion uh, so that the, that the whole would be protected. And Jesus breaks that down. There are times where the religious leaders were so focused on getting to the task at hand uh, that they didn't want to be defiled by the dying uh, uh, man who was burglarized on the side of the road. Uh, and Jesus points that out. You've missed the mark. And several times as Jesus uh, is criticized for who he dines with and that he didn't follow, follow all of the purity laws uh, before he ate, reminds them that sometimes making somebody <coughs> feel worthy making somebody feel like part of their family, honoring somebody by breaking bread with them, sometimes trumps these laws. And then three times in Luke's gospel, it's around the Sabbath. Jesus believed in the Sabbath time. He believed in prayer. He again and again uh, uh, retreated. But he also realized that when a child of God uh, is, is uh, encumbered for 18 years from realizing their potential, their dream, that 18 years in one day is too long. So when he sees the child of God bent over and unable to enjoy the fruits of life, he heals him. Sabbath or not Sabbath. And the dream is awoken. Bishop Michael Curry talks about a uh, mission trip that he took uh, to Botswana when he was Bishop of North Carolina before he became the presiding Bishop of the United States. Uh, and that was at their companion diocese. Uh, and while he was there, the very last stop uh, was uh, it was to this daycare center, uh, and uh, Bishop Curry loved nothing more than singing some of those old great church songs and uh, having them all get up and uh, singing uh, uh, this little light of mine, and, uh, Jesus loves the little children, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, hallelujah. They were singing these songs, and people were getting up and down, and everybody was having a great time, and he realized that one of the, uh, the children, a young girl, wasn't getting up, uh, and then uh, also later he noticed that, that she had uh, crutches by her side, uh, and then finally, the, uh, the priest uh, dismisses all the children, and they go, and they start to play. Uh, and he sees that, that girl, and she's uh, uh, very painfully but, uh, and slowly uh, getting her crutches and walking over to where uh, the girls are, and, uh, I mean, to where the kids are playing. And so Bishop Curry asks the priest there about this girl. And uh, the priest says, the, runner, the person who runs the daycare center uh, has made it his, his passion to go into all of these little communities and find, uh, and find children uh, whose needs are not being met. And this uh, child was living with her, her grandparents who were unable to take care of her. Uh, she uh, had this ailment that had her bedridden. She hadn't been out of bed for a long time. Uh, and so she found some, he found some physical therapists who were willing to work with her, uh, got her so that she could use the crutches, uh, and, and, and gave her some, some mobility, and that she was making incredible strides, uh, and that the community was helping her uh, grow into uh, being able to, to live a more active life. Uh, 
And as he was telling the story, Bishop uh, Curry watches as, as she tumbles and she, she falls. Uh, and as, as Bishop Curry uh, goes to step forward, uh, the priest puts his hand uh, uh, forward to keep uh, Bishop Curry from moving and says, sometimes uh, we need to help people uh, get up and walk and realize their dreams, that God has a dream for every one of us. Uh, and it is our responsibility to help them realize it. And sometimes that's letting them get up. Uh, and so uh, Bishop Curry watched as she got back up and, and walked and said he never forgot that moment, that the church's responsibility is for helping people realize their dreams. And in doing so, that's when God's dream gets realized. Uh, and so as a church, uh, I hope we hear Jesus' words and his warnings. <coughs> sometimes our primary focus isn't where God's calling. Sometimes our dreams are at the expense of others, and sometimes God's dream is realized when we stop. And we look around, and we realize an opportunity to build up the kingdom. When we realize an opportunity to help someone else realize their dreams. And in doing so, the kingdom of God comes close. And God's vision, God's dream for all of us, is closer to